So I'm going to start with the Chamber of Commerce API. I can see that we have our strings here. So what I'm going to do is say district dot Cambridge district dot county district dot Middleton. Oops, and uh, the first one should be downtown, I think. So we're essentially making a dictionary here, depending on how you like to format your code. You might sort of format it like a table. And we can see that this is essentially mapping some number to the key for the district. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this the responsibility of our district helper. And I would consider these magic numbers, like it's not clear what they mean from the code here. So we can use naming to help our fellow developers with that. So I'm just going to move that into here. And here I think I'm just going to return an int and we'll see how this works. We can just say get district number. We can keep our dictionary uh, data structure. It's going to be really efficient for us for this purpose. But we'll say get district number by name, string name. Here's our dictionary. And then if we want to extract these magic numbers, we can even just say downtown ID. County ID. And maybe this is coming from a database. So maybe we don't have this type of structure. Um, but assuming that it's for some reason hard coded, I would tend to wrap this wrap these uh, values. And then at least someone can say, oh, this is the ID or whatever for the particular um, for the particular district. But like I said, often this type of data is stored in a database somewhere. The other thing is we don't need to uh, prepend the static class here because we're within it. So what we'll do is we'll just remove the redundant qualifiers everywhere in the folder. And now we have some sort of silly structure here to get the uh, get the int back out. And these can all be made private because the only place they're accessed is via this get district number by name. So we can say district ID is equal to district helper. District, and we'll bring in the missing reference. And note that the behavior actually here was district dot two lower to string. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back into here. And I think what I'd like to do everywhere is to actually make these lowercase. And whenever any request comes in for getting the district by its name, it's going to be the lowercase string. So we'll need to go make sure that that is uh, used as expected everywhere. Okay, and we can check on that in just a bit. So now we just interpolate the district ID. 
And then what I see here is essentially a URL that's hard coded. And most of the time, almost all the time, we don't want to place hard coded URLs in our code, um, but they should be put in our configuration. Um, sometimes you'll see people just pull them out and put them at the top of a class. That's probably better than uh, sort of hiding them within a particular method. But uh, in general, this type of stuff should be configured. And so what I'll do here is I'll create a public chamber of commerce API constructor and we can just give it I configuration, create the config value here. Call it base photo URL is equal to config dot get value which is just a string and then we'll say photo URL or base photo URL and then what I'm going to do is go into our app settings dot JSON and we'll place a key there for that and then we'll come back into here and then we'll say our absolute URL is equal to new URI base photo URL district ID to string and here we need to actually make the first argument a URI itself and then we can simply make that request to that absolute URL now I think that should work just kind of going off the cuff here but basically we want to get this value from configuration rather than hard coding it the other thing we can do here is make sure that the HTTP client is disposed of by creating a using block for it. And I think with C Sharp 8 it is that we don't need to actually make the using uh, using block a, an actual block with curly braces, but we could just declare it using here. And then what I think I would like to do here is to actually uh, create a quick private method build URL for district. This is the kind of case where I don't want to go overboard and say, oh, I should create a, uh, create a separate object that is a URL district builder when we have um, uh, logic that's actually this simple. Um, but I will say, and this needs to be URI, um, that it's still in principle not a bad idea to do that. Especially if for some reason the different districts had different, I don't know, had different uh, base URLs that they go out to to get some image for the advertisement or what have you. But in this case, I am just hiding away uh, essentially a very small amount of logic. Um, it's just... Uh, it's just I don't want to go overboard here. I'm just showing you a practical decision, but maybe in the future we have a URL builder, uh, which becomes a dependency of this class, etc., that we can then actually test the public interface for this build URL for a district. And then I'm going to add some documentation here. We can say for the provided district. returns the data result object containing the thumbnail URL or we can say the ID, thumbnail, thumbnail URL and title for the district's image and now we've kind of cleaned up the Chamber of Commerce API just a bit. We could even move this struct out into its own class, but um, in general, I like to keep structs actually in the in a, in a file where they're used, especially if we're only using them in this one place, of course. So now let's take a look at our district order factory. I think that that's looking okay. Uh, the deal service itself here has some things that we could clean up here. Uh, for instance, we could pull out this maybe to uh, helper 
class. Um, we could wrap each of these strings. I'll leave it to you to do that if that's something that you're interested in doing. We don't need the uh, declaration of the constructor here if it's just a parameterless constructor. Uh, we can clean up the redundant else though. And we have some magic numbers here that we could extract. So I can see that we're generating a deal if it's after noon and before midnight. We have one rate and then we have another rate otherwise. So I'm going to make a decimal here. called PM rate. And an AM rate. And then we can have a private Boolean is afternoon. And we can make this an expression. And I like to put the, the, uh, the private methods rather at the bottom. And I also like to clean up the Boolean stacking. And now we can make this a ternary. And these, of course, are private. Okay, just for the sake of completion, I actually will extract these. To a class called Business Helper. And then here's another interesting point. We have this list of strings here, and I can see that there were duplicate strings for bakery in it. So that's another uh, another sign that maybe we have the wrong type here because we don't necessarily want duplicates. Um, so we could use a hash set here, for instance. I could say um, public static hash set should define a unique set. And with this kind of class, it is the case sometimes, I think, that we need a uh, individual access to these, the values from these expressions, and sometimes we need the aggregate, as we mentioned when we looked at the other sort of case here in the app. Um, so depending on that, if you didn't need access to the fields themselves outside of in the aggregate, we would make them private so that we don't um, you know, if we don't need access to them, we just we hide them behind the private access modifier. Otherwise, if we do need to, throughout the app, say something like if local business barbershop, then we would, of course, need to make them public. So I'm going to keep them public for now. And here, what we can say is, you notice the variable naming here is another thing where we had LBs for local businesses. That's not very descriptive. So we could say something like local businesses is equal to local business dot all businesses. Local businesses dot count. And we can enumerate them to a list to get them by index here when we need to. And so now we've extracted some magic numbers here, and it's more clear what they actually mean. A and the PM rate, our code is much more readable. We say things like, uh, for generate deal, we can say, is it afternoon? Then the PM rate, otherwise the AM rate. And we can even make this an expression body, and things just become a lot more readable, I think.